Verse 8, draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, I want you to see verse 8. I'm going to draw out for our title the first part of verse 8. Draw nigh to God, or draw near to God. You're ready for life change. It's a whole new way of living. You're ready for life change. Through the cross we've been forgiven. You're ready for life change. Welcome to Life Change, the media ministry of Pastor Troy Irvin and Kingsway Fellowship. Get ready for life change. Draw near to God, God will draw near to you. Have you ever wanted to get close to someone? And it seemed like no matter what you did, that person simply didn't want to be your friend. You wanted to have a relationship with them in the worst way, but they simply didn't want anything to do with you. Maybe when you were in high school, there was a certain girl or a certain guy that man you wanted to go out with them and they simply didn't want you maybe go back a little farther you remember the note you would send will you go with me yes no maybe <laughs> you ever send one of those notes did you ever get one of those notes how did it feel when the note came back and it was checked no and then the maybe Maybe you got one that said, maybe. You thought, my, there's a little bit of hope. When you didn't realize, they were just simply trying to say no in a nice way. It didn't matter what you did. You could phone call. You could send a letter. Nowadays, send emails, text, all the things we do to try to connect to somebody. But if they simply don't want to be close to us, it won't happen. I think sometimes God feels just that way. Do you realize God has done everything he can to get close to you? He gave his son, Jesus Christ, who willingly died as your substitute, as my substitute. He gave us his word that we can read and, and know his heart, know what he's about, know what he thinks, how he feels. He's given us his spirit that will bear witness with us and live in us and walk through us. He's done everything he can to get close to us. Now, God says through James, I'm going to put the ball in your court. You come close to me, then I'll come close to you. God looks at us and says, if you'll take the first step, I'll run to you, baby. If you'll come near me, then I will come near you. If there were ever a day we needed God to be close to us, it's now. I'm so glad that God has made a way for that to happen. We read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13, But now in Christ we were sometimes afar off, but we have been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7 and 9 tells us, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope, Jesus, by which we draw nigh unto God. God has a passion to be close to you. The question today is, do you have a passion to be close to God? Now here are some facts about getting close to God. There are three things that will inevitably happen if we do draw close to God. Now, these could be some reasons why we're hesitant. Some people oftentimes will start to get close to God and then draw back. And these could be some reasons why people draw back even. First of all, the closer we get to God, the more we see of ourselves. The closer we get to God, the more we see of ourselves. And quite honestly, it's not always pretty what we see. You ever notice there's something in mankind that wants to believe he's good? We all want to believe it. As a matter of fact, 
it, it's without fail, almost every time I ask somebody, do you think when you die you're going to heaven? They'll say something like this, well, I'm a good person. Is that so? Are we really good? Or by nature, are we sinful? You know, the Bible says that nobody is good except for Jesus. Nobody is good. I guess it's, it's, it depends on what the barometer is, what you're comparing yourself to. You cannot help get, but get close to God. And when you get close to Him, you cannot help but see who you really are. If you get close to His holiness, right away you'll notice your unholiness. If you get close to his purity, you, right away you'll notice your impurities. If you get close to how clean he is, you'll see how dirty you are. And that sometimes causes us to draw back because we don't like what we see when we get close to him. Isaiah had this experience. He said in chapter 6, of his writing, it was the year that King Uzziah died and I saw the Lord high and lifted up. By the way, God is still high and lifted up. I know that ungodly men have done a lot, made great efforts in trying to rip him down from his position of authority, sovereignty, and glory. But I want to tell you this morning, God is still a sovereign God. He's still in control. He's still a God of holiness and of glory. And no man will ever change that. I'm almost ready to preach in a minute. He's high and lifted up. He said, when I saw him, his train filled the temple. He said, there were seraphim that flew the throne and day and night sang, holy, 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 holy. God is a holy God. And I say a thrice or a three times holy. What do you mean? God the Father is holy. God the Son is holy. And God the Holy Ghost is a holy God. Holy, holy, holy. And he said, then I noticed there was smoke that moved at the post of the door. There it speaks of the glory of God. Isaiah stood in the presence of a sovereign, holy God and recognized and realized his glory. And when he did, and when he did, immediately, everyone say immediately. Immediately, immediately he saw himself. You know what he said? He said, woe is me. I'm undone. I'm unclean. He said, woe is me. What's, what's going on? I, I feel like I'm a good person. Well, it depends on who you're comparing yourself to. What's the barometer of our holiness, our goodness? What's, what are we if we compare to one another, maybe me compared to Shannon, I might look good or vice versa. Maybe if Shannon is saying, well, I'm a good, but look at Troy, I, I'm a better Christian. I, maybe he might say, I'm holy, look at him. You know, we do that all the time. People say, well, look at so-and-so in the church. They're doing this, that, and the other, and I don't do that. Have you ever done that? Come on, don't let me, don't leave me alone here. Say amen, 10, 4, good buddy, something. Smile. Come on. Say I'm alive. I just wanted to make sure. Have you ever done that? Have you ever compared yourself to somebody else? When you do that, maybe compared to somebody else, you might look good. It just depends on what you're standing beside. 